Hey everybody. Feeling a little under the weather today. So I have some of my favorite leather. This is Wicket and Craig's Deer Print Hide. Fresh hide from Buckle Guy. I have a drawing for a sample that I want to make of a little mini tote. So what I've done is I've cut out all the pieces that you'll need to make this sample. Um, I'm going to put them on the screen now. And you can just cut them out on your own. Take a screenshot of that. This is just a sample, so free pattern, I guess. Make sure to, well, you'll see how it turns out at the end, but make sure to make your own adjustments if you, as you see fit. I have the two body panels here, a pocket. All of the strapping you'll see is going to be one inch. I've made a double layer for handles. And then this is going to be the bottom piece, and I've stamped everything. So I have my decorative straps on this first piece. The second piece, I've scribed a line an inch and a half in here. That's so that I know the outside line of my decorative straps is going to go right there. However, I want to glue this pocket in. So I'm going to use Ted's tape for the straps because I want to be able to reposition them. But I want this pocket to stay where I put it. So we're going to use some glue for this. You can use Ted's tape for this as well. All right. Let's get this pocket glued in. Once we get the pocket glued in, we have our Ted's tape on our straps here. I'm going to use this line that I scribed. Get that right there. There we go. This will be ready to sew up as well. As happens sometimes, now that I have the two body pieces together, I figured out that that's really ugly. So I'm going to make some nice rounded off handles. And we'll just save these for another project. So what I'm going to do is, instead of cutting one inch strips, gluing them together, I'm going to glue together a big piece and then cut it into strips. And that way, it'll be perfectly trimmed and I don't have to do any trimming afterwards. So, let's see here. We'll do this. We'll go like this. These handles are about 15 inches long. And I'm gonna make probably four of them because I wanna make another one of these after, so I'm gonna cut this down the middle and do it this way. Now I'll just throw some glue on these. And once they're glued up, we can cut them in strips. Running low on glue though. Someone this week sent me an email asking me about working full time in the workshop. It's the only job I've ever had. I said, don't you get lonely? And gosh, I haven't even thought about it, but the last year and a half I've lived and worked alone. You know, I have tenants that live in the house and stuff too with me, but in another part of the house and uh, got me kind of thinking about this job because I kind of had it all different ways and it's been like 17 years. The first seven, I worked alone and I lived with roommates and a partner, et cetera. And then I had Kalina for nine years with me. And last year and a half, I've been working alone again. But I've been living alone this time, too, which is it's something. And it, it is lonely. At first, it was very lonely. I think one of the most powerful things that 
you can learn how to do is learn how to be alone and peaceful with it. And I will be honest in saying that I was not great being alone. And I'm not alone all the time. I, you know, I have friends and go do plenty of stuff and see family and all that. But, um, you know, if I'm not careful, I was finding myself alone for two, three days at a time. It just wasn't good. And um, that's one of the things with this job. If you don't have roommates or friends or family or coworkers, you're just kind of on your own. And the thing is, because you're on, on your own all the time, it can be difficult to meet people, especially if you're like in your 30s or 40s or whatever. I don't really know how people meet people at this age, but I've managed to do it a little bit, which is nice. Um, and so I wrote back an email, but <laughs> it got me kind of thinking about that whole, that question. How many of you guys, how many of you work alone out there? Do you live alone too? What's your, what's your daily process like? Do you, my big thing is I always go out, my whole life, I've, adult life, I always go out and get lunch. And is it a little expensive? Yes. But does it save my sanity? Also, yes, because if I don't spend that time out of the shop, I'd just be, I wouldn't leave for days at a time. So that's one of the things where I always budget for lunch so I can get out and see the world. Once that glue is dry to the touch, we'll stick these together. When you do it this way, you get a nice clean cut throughout. You don't have to do any trimming. This leather is super nice to punch. It's really soft, but it's still a veg tan, so it's it's got some body to it. So a few people have asked me how learning the sewing machine is going, and honestly, it's been going pretty well. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to practice the last couple weeks because of shipping out the grab bags and stuff, but. I'm slowly learning, and I'm at least to the point where I can make samples like this, and they're presentable. They're not perfect, but they're presentable. I'm using medium brown Feebing's dye, pro dye, on these edges. And then I'm going to set them to the side once I burnish them. You can put these on before you sew the bag. Uh, I'm going to end up sewing the body together next. You can put these on first, but it's a little much for me because I'm not good on the sewing machine yet. So I'm going to work within my means and put them on after. Once our handles are all done, we'll set those to the side for a little bit and we're going to put together the body of the bag. So basically, we're just going, I'm just going to glue along the bottom here and sew these two pieces together, and that'll create one big piece that will flip inside out and sew. So I'm going to put these two pieces together. I want to make sure that I have a little branding here. I had new made on Cape Cod's stamp made, and I want to make sure that's on the right side. Oh. Bring the other side with the pocket. Once this is done, we'll go to the sewing machine. Stuff like this is where I'm not perfect on the sewing machine yet. These thin little seams, but Gotta keep trying, make them come out good. I'm getting better at it, but I'm still not perfect. Once we get this all sewn up, I'm going to glue up the sides now and glue this inside out. And then it'll be time to stitch it up and flip it. We're gonna do a little liner. I'll drop that in after, not the whole bag, just a little 
one inch liner around the top. Um, that'll just give it a little more rigidity along the top, along with a stitch line to make it look nice. I'm gonna trim it out. And once we do that, we'll add our handles and we'll be done. So I still hand sew these corners. It's just easier for me. And I just kind of wing it, to be honest with you. I don't do anything super crazy. I just hand punch and sew and uh, yeah, then we'll flip it inside out, which is on a bag this small, not super fun, but this leather is pretty soft, so it's not, it's not that bad. I'm going to put a liner around the top inside now, and then we will put our straps on. We're pretty much done. I know that both of my main body panels are 10 inches wide. So I'm just going to do a like a 20 inch wide little mini liner thing to sew around the top. Do the width of my ruler, which is an inch and a quarter wide. There we go. So we're just going to sew around slowly using the full advantage of the cylinder arm here. This is something I've wanted to try for a while. And it's working pretty good. It's fun to be able to sort of do all this stuff that I've always wanted to try. But hand sewing, it's like, eh, it's going to take forever. Here we are. It's a nice little tote. It's fun. Um, you can see on the inside, this is where I put the liner in. A little mini liner. And then I painted the, or I dyed the edges and burnished them. We have a pocket in the front. Of course, nothing here is perfect. It's just a sample. But you get the idea. And of course, you can make it bigger or smaller on any side that you like. And I think the only thing I'm going to change is I think on the next one, I'll probably make the handles do like a rolled handle. But what do you guys think? I'm interested to know how you would change the design, if you would change the design, what you would add, what you'd take away. Um, and maybe we'll make some adjustments and make another one. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing your versions if you make one of these. And I'll see you in the next one.